It's a beautiful spring day here in central Japan and I'm just heading out on my bike to explore the countryside and check out the cherry blossoms which are currently in full bloom. We'll also be stopping at some local shrines and temples along the way. So I was thinking it's a good chance to talk about the difference between the two and the roles they play in everyday Japanese life. And there's our first destination. So let's talk about the social functions of a typical neighborhood temple in Japan. As you may have guessed, temples are a place for meditation, prayer, and Buddhist studies. Depending on the time of day, you can sometimes hear the temple priest, and maybe others, chanting sutras, which I suppose are a combination of all three of these. Some larger temples have been designated as monastic training centers, but a regular village temple like this one focuses more on the needs of the surrounding community, such as kindergarten or daycare services, a base for clubs, community initiatives, or social activities, and often just a place to feel calm. And probably most famously, it's the place where we go for funeral services, and there's usually an attached graveyard. Not all Japanese people may consider themselves Buddhist concerning their lives, but almost everyone follows the traditional rituals and ceremonies surrounding death. And there's one more important social role I should mention. You'll notice that most Buddhist temples have these big impressive looking bells. We don't normally hear them ring, except on January the 31st, just before midnight. On New Year's Eve, the temple bell is rung 108 times, representing the 108 worldly desires of traditional Buddhist teachings. People will often attend this ceremony, or at least watch it on TV, as part of their New Year's Eve custom. I assume the idea is that by admitting quite loudly that we all share these worldly desires, we may be able to give them up, or at least lessen their influence over our lives in the new year. If we say that Buddhist temples, or Japanese Buddhism in general, performs the social function of helping people in Japan deal with death, then Shinto, the indigenous religion of Japan, is about how people deal with life. 
Specifically, people visit a Shinto shrine to pray during various rites of passage. Weddings, special rituals to pray for children's growth and health, or just to pray for good fortune in life's ventures, education, love, business, etc. Most Japanese people also visit a shrine to pray during the first few days of the new year. The shrines are usually built in places considered to have spiritual significance, maybe because of some sort of special natural force that's present in the area, or some kind of kami, or even specific Shinto deity is enshrined there. Whereas most people do come to Shinto shrines to pray, others visit just to connect with the spiritual energy present in the natural environment there. This temple is a lot smaller than the one we visited earlier and kind of hidden away in the mountains here. Rather than serving a general community function, I suspect that this one has been built to venerate a particular Buddhist saint. And maybe as a place for meditation, this really is a peaceful spot. There's also a little shrine over here, off to the side of the temple ground. Despite Shinto and Buddhism being different religions, it's common for shrines and temples to be located next to each other in Japan. The two exist symbiotically, inseparably woven together into the social fabric of Japan. Thanks for joining me today. If you'd like to see more content like this, hit that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments. See you in the next video.